You're listening to Nightlight Radio Network. This is Dr. Bob Hieronymus, co-host of 21st Century Radio. We are happy to present this rebroadcast of our show on Nightlight. Well, welcome back to 21st Century Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Hieronymus, and our executive producer and research assistant is Laura Cortner, and our engineer is Anita Brockington. Tonight, we are dedicating our show to a very dear friend that Both Dr. Zahara and I worked with and greatly admired Jahan Sadat. The New York Times carried the announcement, and if I'm a a little bit unbalanced here tonight, it can't help it, announcement that Jahan Sadat has passed into the spiritual dimensions at the age of 87. Now, Zoe and I worked with Jahan and her husband Anwar Sadat as we established a sister city relationship between Baltimore and Luxor, Egypt, and Alexandria, Egypt, in the 1980s. It took us four years to do it. Now, Zoe also interviewed Jahan on The Zoe Show. They became buddies when she <laughs> was a visiting lecturer at Georgetown University. As reported by The Times, Jahan supported her husband, Anwar El Sadat. even though she knew it meant she was going to lose him. After his assassination proved her correct, she did lose him. She continued her own trailblazing work to improve women's lives in Egypt, despite the heavy criticism she received for her work of modernizing Egyptian society. What a lovely, advanced soul. We will really miss her. Now, we've all heard the phrase, as above, so below, right? Well, tonight, we're going to reveal to you how your astrological chart that is above has implications for your personal health and healing that is below. Our guest, Jennifer Gale outlines the connection between human health and cosmic science in her book that we are discussing tonight called The Science of Planetary Signatures in Medicine, Restoring the Cosmic Foundations of Healing, written by Dr. Mark S. Mikazi. I hope I... Written with... Excuse me. Yes, I see. With Dr. Mark S. Mikazi. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. This book reveals how your celestial nature, the arrangement of the cosmos at the moment of your birth, has implications for personal health. Each sign of the zodiac corresponds to parts of the body, the chakras, the specific plant and specific plants and herbs and colors and emotions. Jennifer explains how sound rearranges forms according to the principles of harmony, improving the body's inherent ability to restore health, and also that the earth, too, restore balance and harmony. She explores how to use sound healing to harmonize astrological imbalances, as well as how to apply the knowledge of recurrence of geometric forms in nature, weaving together the threads of ancient science and spirit that form the original tapestry of medicine. Gail explains how to restore the cosmic foundations of healing for personal, planetary, and university, university, excuse me, universal health and well-being. Jennifer Gale has a bachelor's degree in music and a master's degree in health sciences. She has also studied energy medicine. I think I pronounced this acute tonics, uh, Chinese medicine, astrology, and yoga. She studies just about everything. She provides astrology consultations and customized recordings that turns astrology into a sound healing experience. Listen to what these sound like on her YouTube channel. We last talked to her in 2019 about her book called The Return of the Planet Sedna, Astrology, Healing, and the Awakening of Cosmic Kundalini. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio, Jennifer Gale. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate being on your show again. 
Well, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> it sure is, and I, I want to get to. I learned so much. That this is just, I love to learn. And, uh, well, and, as do I, as you might imagine. <laughs> yes, and you got many different levels of learning here. So, uh, what inspired you to write the science of planetary signatures in medicine? Well. I really was working on what I thought would be a class called Bringing Planetary Medicine Down to Earth. And at the time I was in grad school, I had done some collaborative writing with Dr. Mark McCosey. And I approached him, I, I was doing so much writing and I really enjoyed it. And I thought, well, why not make this a book instead of a course? So I approached him with the idea, and that's how this book came into being. So he's the one who got me in touch with a publisher, and um, I did the research. I wrote the book. He edited it, and we put it you know, together. And so this this book is really a comprehensive overview of why we should even care about the movement in the heavens, you know, what's the movement in the heavens got to do with me and my body and my health and my life? And so this book is really, there's there's a lot to it, as sure you've is. already alluded to, but the main idea with this book is reminding us, helping us all remember that as human beings, we grow and evolve at you know, the level of soul and spirit, emotionally, all of these elements live within us. And just like the plants derive energy, not just from the sun, but from all of the elements and all of the stars, they pull in the energy, the heavenly energies and the energies from earth, and they create medicine for us. That's the doctrine of signatures, that nature marks each growth with its curative benefit. And so this signature that we are born with at the time of our birth, there's a snapshot of the heavens at the moment we're born. And these are all energies that we that dwell within us. So the planets aren't just out there. They're inside of us. And I, um, so that's I'll leave it there for now because I, I know we're going to talk about so much yeah, more. Yeah, there's so much more. Boy, I, just, I felt like I was back at school all over. Now, does astrology determine our fate or do we have free will? We absolutely have free will. But this is the way that I look at astrology. And I I won't dive deep with Pythagorean philosophy just yet. But I will say that the universe is, like, number in and of itself is order. Number in time is music and harmony. Number in space is geometry. And number in space-time is astronomy. This is Pythagorean philosophy. The reason I say that is because I look at the astrology chart, which is geometry, as frozen music. Well, does the celestial signature ever change? So there are many different cycles. Your natal signature is the snapshot, which does not change. So we carry those, we carry that signature with us throughout life. However, you have different cycles. For instance, there's a progressed sun, progressed moon. They, um, and you can look at how the sun, the conscious part of your evolution is in relationship with moon, the, the emotional stability, emotional security that we seek. So the moon moves, the progressed moon moves every two and a half years. So it takes on a new sign, a new um, tone, let's say. And the sun moves, changes degree, one degree per year. So every 30 years, your progressed sun is going to take on a new sign. So that's one cycle that we can look at. But then there are others like your Venus return, your solar return, um, 
And all that means all the planets continue to move in the heavens at different cycles or rhythms, their rhythms. So uh, like everyone experiences a Saturn return between the ages of 28 and 30, and then again, 58 and 60, Saturn has its own particular set of lessons. It's about career, life calling, giving structure to your life, doing your responsibility, your duty, etc. Uranus has a different cycle and a different lesson altogether. It's about liberating us from the structures that Saturn seems to want to, um, you know, put, put us in the restrictions think of the rings around saturn and everyone goes through the uranus opposition between ages 38 to 42 i think it is so midlife crisis um it's only it doesn't have to be a crisis but it's just a period of time at when we reach that age we want to change things up a bit we want a little bit of freedom you know we've taken on the saturn structures around 28 to 30 of uh, career, home, family. Most of us, not everyone. <laughs> like I didn't, but <laughs> um, I'm just saying that there are, things are always changing. So change is a constant in the universe, even though your natal chart remains the same. But Bob, I do want to say, getting back to my original, my first answer about free will, The way that we evolve, the way the consciousness brings these notes to life, these harmonic relationships to life, does change. It changes and evolves as we do. So from student to the masterful musician, that piece of music is going to sound very different. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. Some of our listeners out there who felt that they understood what astrology was about are going to be pretty excited about what we they are going to learn this evening. Oh, we got to take a break. Let's do that first so that we don't slow it down. Okay, the science of planetary signatures in medicine, restoring the cosmic foundations of healing with uh, Dr. Mark S. Mikazi, Healing Arts Press, Sound Works by Gale.com. That's spelled G-E-H-L. This is research astronomer Tom Van Flandern, and you're listening to 21st Century Radio with Dr. Bob Hieronymus. On that video and that piece, I use Jupiter and Pluto um, to represent the sextile and op- an opening, excuse me, of opportunity is what the sextile represents. So Jupiter expands what it touches. Pluto is inner hidden wealth. It's the wealth that we cultivate as we work with a shadow personality, work with um, things that are buried deep in the unconscious. But there's always, it's about spiritual wealth, not just material wealth. So uh, that, the combination of Jupiter and Pluto was played with the intention of expanding spiritual and material wealth. Uh, well, well needed. All right, that's for sure. Now, what is the message you most want to convey to our listeners? I would say that it's important to remember that everything in the universe works on the basis of reciprocity. What we do in our own lives to heal our being, and that includes all elements physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Any work that we do in that vein is never wasted because we are literally a cell, C-E-L-L, in all of the cosmos and all of the, the environment that surrounds us. So the more that we clean up our own act, basically, we are helping to clean up the world. We, we don't go about bringing harmony into the world by trying to change or control everything and everyone outside of us. What we need to do is clean up our own triggers, our own fears. And when we work on that, it reverberates into Mm -hmm. the greater consciousness and into the greater collective. 
that's the only way that we can truly bring harmony on this planet is by each individual understanding the power they have when they align with source energy, however they do that. And sound is just the the means that I use. That's my language. I'm, um, and I feel that sound is, it, it really accelerates the healing process and bringing us back into wholeness, back into awareness when we combine sound with intention. Mm-hmm. Intention especially is important, uh, in, in my opinion, because regardless of whether uh, you are correct or incorrect about whatever you're doing, it is your your intention determines whether or not it can and should be accomplished. I didn't say that right, but that's that's generally what I was trying to do. No, I know exactly. Ab- absolutely. We're all... Uh, We're all imperfect humans. We're not going to get it right the first time, right? That's why I talked about the student or the the master musician, because we got to start from wherever we are and we have an intention. And if that intention is to heal ourselves or to help the, you know, someone else in our community, I'm just saying that rather than trying to fix it, because none of us can fix what's quote unquote wrong Mm -hmm. with anyone else or with the world. All we can do is change our perspective. We have to change our own um, issues so that, you know, we're, we're trigger free because when, if something someone else says or does triggers us, that is an invitation to go after that thing and find out what the cause is or was. Because it didn't it didn't come about from the person outside of us. It lives within us. It found mm-hmm. resonance mm-hmm. within us. Whatever that person did or said found resonance within. And that is what has to be healed. Well, why is change the most important aspect of aspect relative to healing. I was really surprised with this. I, this is one of the things I noted earlier that I learned so much from this book. Well, for me, uh, for me, change is, first of all, it's inevitable, but the opposite of change is stagnation. And stagnation is what deteriorates and brings decay to life. Mm-hmm. Life is constantly changing life is constantly regenerating rejuvenating um adapting and so if we want everything to be the same stay the same that's stagnation that leads to death death of course is just a bridge it's a bridge that (laughs) um you know it, it constricts and confines until the soul you know, the body dies and the soul goes free, Mm -hmm. but change is inevitable. And so to consciously work with life means that we are constantly evolving. We should be evolving Evolving. and working change from the inside out rather than from the external and outside world in. We're always evolving. Think about how uh, the cells of our body are constantly regenerating. Mm-hmm. We don't, the the heart continues to beat. There's change constantly going on, even if we don't detect it with our mind's eye. So everything also has a different rhythm. I, I love to come back to the musical analogy because I think this is something that might help those who are new to astrology kind of grasp what I'm trying to explain here. Think of it this way, if, think of a a symphony orchestra, if everyone played the melody, there would be no harmony. Why would we tell the brass section that, oh, you need to sound like violins now, or the percussion section, oh, you need to sound like the piccolo or the woodwinds. It's not going to work that way. Everyone has a very unique voice. And so the way astrology works is the planets are vibrations of consciousness. They are instincts that live within us. We don't think of them. We don't consciously, you know, 
think of them, but that's what my work is about, is to make this conscious connection. Anyway, the planets are vibrations of consciousness. The signs are the instruments that sound a little different. Um, they are not supposed to sound the same. So the planets express themselves through these instruments, the signs. The, the houses in the chart are the areas of life, and you can think of them as the rehearsal stage. This is where we play out the energies, and we learn, and we evolve how to play these energies a little bit more masterfully. And the whole point is for us as individuals to understand that, yes, there is a greater power than our individual life. And when we call on that power, the order, the harmony of the cosmos, however you do it, you know, in whatever way you call upon life source energy, align with that, call upon that every day, you will find a magic in life that brings peace beyond anything that anyone could tell you, anything beyond anything that you would learn in a book or from someone else's experience. We will never learn from someone else's experience. Life cannot be learned from under a microscope. It's not mechanistic like that. Mm -hmm. We have to get into, we have to take ownership of our own laboratory, which is our life. And... <laughs> work with these energies and understand that yes change is the only constant we must evolve it that's what infinity is there's no ceiling on infinity right yeah so it's about tapping into an awakening that conductor within that hears the music and uh, you know the divine composer and uh practice your music so that's why change is the most important aspect of rel relative to healing? Because change is practice. Why play the same note? If you play the same notes in the same way, day after day after day, there's no creativity in that. There's no growth in that. Practice does make perfect. And when we are aware that that things are changing all the time. We can discover new things all the time. If we keep the same perspective, we become rigid. We don't, we're not able to hear uh, someone else's. We're, you know, we're, we're not able to hear the cellos when they have the melody. <laughs> we're drowning them out with our... Uh, with the bass. With our instrument. Yeah. Yeah. With a, using bass instead of something else. Uh, how does planetary energy affect us individually? Well, in the same way that it affects plants, we don't see how we don't see the plant actually growing, but we know that they are nourished by the energy from Earth in the soil and the energies that come from the stars and, and the sun. And that's what makes the plant grow. It, we are no different. Um, between heaven and earth is we our bodies are conduits of cosmic and earth energies well i really enjoyed so, i really enjoyed your bringing yes. up uh, chris bird and peter tompkins he was he was my best man at my wedding chris was and peter always oh, got no. always got me in trouble um I think he, <laughs> I think he enjoyed doing that to just about everybody. Uh, so I really appreciated that, and and you mentioned them several times within this work as to what they were struggling through. I, I was with them when they were going through that struggle of trying to get a publisher, et cetera, and the difficulties that they had, uh, and then being attacked immediately after their book came out, uh, which uh, was a, quite a difficult time. Uh, for all, everybody in regards to what they were doing. Chris, I think, was the real thinker. And Peter was the actor in, in this. And um, he played a, a lot of acting games that um, were very effective in getting good publicity for what he was doing because uh, you were talking about the, the secret life of plants, uh, which uh, yes. was attacked immediately. Boy, uh, being with them when the, this attacking was going on was really a, a sad situation uh, because you know how uh, difficult 
certain aspects of um, our consciousness when you come up against people that have never heard of this stuff before. They just laughed at it. Yeah. How can how can a, yeah. any kind of plant have any type of consciousness? And uh, these guys were strong, and uh, and that's why I like them so much. Uh, and I'm, and, it's and good. thank goodness they persisted. Yes, they did. And that's absolutely it. It's so important that we have a voice and that we speak our truth. This is Paracelsus was a, a 15th century alchemist and uh, physician, and he listened to nature. He observed nature and took his cues from nature. And he was, despite the fact that he was very much unliked by his peers and he had a cantankerous uh, personality from, yeah. you know, this I gather from everything that I've read about him, he was still ahead of his time, way ahead of his time. Yeah. And his tinctures were far more successful than those of his peers. But of course, everyone thought that he was you know, off his rocker, of going course. out in nature. Mm -hmm. And um, he would talk to miners and listen to their stories. And I, I include this story in the book. I found it so fascinating that miners who would mine in one location finding no gold whatsoever would much later come back to that very same spot and they would see veins of gold actually growing mm -hmm. so what paracelsus was revealing through his writings and his work and what tompkins and bird are also talking about is that yes Everything is alive. It has consciousness and it is growing. It is evolving. Again, that brings me back to the former question. This is why change is important in healing. Um, we have to embrace the fact that everything is constantly, excuse me, constantly changing. The, but plants and all the patterns that we see arise from vibration. So this as above, so below law that, you know, governs life. <laughs> For instance, the, the Big Bang that brought the galaxy into being is going on underground in the soil, which is what allows, there's a, like a counter energy or motion that we can't detect taking place under the soil that allows the plant to actually burst through the soil and take on a shape above ground. So what I guess my the point I'm wanting to make to your audience is that just because we don't see something does not mean it doesn't matter. It That's doesn't right. mean it doesn't exist and that it doesn't have an effect or an impact on our lives. I think that's one of the most important aspects of your book. And with right now, we need to take a break on 21st Century Radio because it's rules and regulations of 506. And with that, there's a penal code involved with that. So we don't want to get thrown off the air for that. So our guest, of course, is Jennifer Gale. And the Science of Planetary Signatures in Medicine, Restoring the Cosmic Foundations of Healing, with Dr. Mark S. Mikazi. Is that how you pronounce his last name, Mikazi? It's Mikozi, actually. Mikozi, I'm sorry. Mikozi Healing Arts Press. This is 21st Century Radio with Bob Hieronymus, and I'm Mark Thurston, author of Discovering Your Soul's Purpose, Finding Your Path and Life and Work and Personal Mission, The Edgar Casey Way. You can learn more about Edgar Casey's work at edgarcasey.org. And I just want to say that I think Bob is living his soul's purpose with this fabulous radio show. And our guest is Jennifer Gale. And we're talking about her book, The Science of Planetary Signatures in Medicine, Restoring the Cosmic Foundations of Healing. And... Um, I want to uh, move to the question of how does planetary energy affect us individually? Well, I talked a little bit about the cycles already. Um, so you're born with this signature, which I am calling your, your musical composition. 
the planets continue to move and as they do, as the planets in the heavens continue to move, they're going to trigger different parts of your chart, so different areas of life. The angles are important because the angles are like sensitive points, uh, call them acupressure points in the body or like acupuncture points that carry heavier energy. So the angles, if you can envision the circle, which is the zodiac, and it's divided into four sections, quadrants, we'll say, those angles are very important because you've got the relationship axis um, representing the eastern side. And so your relationship of self to others. Um, and then you've got the bottom of the chart, which is emotional security, home and foundation, basically your private world, your private life. And the top of the chart is your home in the world. So private to public and self with others. These are just four very particular points that when they're hit by, let's say, a Pluto transit or um, Saturn or something like that, you're going to feel the lesson that that planet carries. And your job then becomes to understand what, what does Saturn conjunct my moon mean? It, it's restrictions around your emotional well-being, or you feel like you cannot express emotions as well as you'd like. So mm-hmm. there's a lesson in that. It's about mastering our own emotions. Saturn wants to teach us mastery or inner authority instead of going to look for outside validation or having another an outside authority literally tell us how we should feel. Saturn conjunct the moon is an invitation for us to learn how to master and our own emotions and become our own authority on that. So that's an example. So this planetary en- energy affecting us individually can mean when you get especially to Saturn, Saturn kind of is a holder backer. Is that correct? It teaches us through limitation first, but Saturn is... Um, it represents time. Think of chronos, chronology. Oh, yes, so over time, if we do the work, which mm-hmm. is what Saturn, the taskmaster, is asking us to do, teaching us through limitation, this lesson first, then the next step and the next, you have to, uh, you have to complete the curriculum, basically. <laughs> and once you have completed the curriculum over time, then you get to graduate. (laughs) So your first Saturn return, let's say, between ages 28 and 30, is going to feel a lot different than when Saturn comes back around. If you've been doing the work that Saturn has asked you or invited you to do, because nothing is ever, you know, it's always an invitation. We, that's where the free will comes in. We can work with these energies consciously, or not, and if we don't, then we feel victimized or just like mm-hmm. batted yeah. about for, by life, mm-hmm. and or you know beaten up. <laughs> at some, sometimes it feels that way. That's what Saturn but makes me feel. The invitation, <laughs> the invitation is, of course, to consciously work with these energies and make the most of them. And Saturn's lesson is about owning our inner authority, being the CEO of our own life. Well put. Well put. How can we affect change in our environment? Honestly, by doing our own curriculum, by studying, whether if if astrology isn't your, you know, language or any way that we can awaken the, the teacher within, awaken the healer within, and stop relying on someone else to fix us or to fix our lives. Uh It's not gonna work that way. The Mm -hmm. only way that we can bring harmony to this planet is by doing the work ourselves, by cleaning up our own act, by neutralizing those triggers. If someone says something that upsets you, find out why, look within, don't look to them, look within. That'll make you a very strong person when you do that, in my opinion. Um, but 
what I was trying to move towards in our environment is you have an internal environment and an external environment. And like it's almost like uh, esotericism uh, from the inside or esotericism for the that is the more open uh, and understood. I think what you're referring to, um, and I, I will just say right off the bat, a lot of this material was such a growth period for me that that I I don't have this book memorized, well, but I, I do believe I I know what you're talking about. Esoteric versus exoteric. Eric, thank you. And esoteric is the hidden realm of spiritual development. Exoteric is the substantive, like mechanistic or the external world of substance that mm-hmm. can be worked with and measured. Yes. Is that right. what you're? Yes, yes. Yes. That's correct. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and both are important. It's, again, it's like the, what makes a plant grow? We don't see what's going on underneath the soil. We don't see those roots growing, receiving nutrients. We don't see, you know, the energy that is like spinning in a counter clockwise direction to the clockwise, uh, blossom or star pattern, whatever that plant you know, holds, we, we don't see the underworld, we only see the result. And yet, when we can tap into our own inner world, the inner realm that is not tangible, um, I the only way I know how to do that is by aligning with life source energy and beginning starting the communication trusting that you are being guided, trusting that when you put forth a question or ask for guidance in the highest vibration of love and light, then you will be guided to what it is you need to know, what it is and what's the next step and the next. You're not going to know it all overnight. You're not going to, it's just, it's a process. <laughs> Growing right. is yeah. a process. Indeed. Learning is a process. And mastering anything, especially our emotions, is a lifelong process. But it's worth it. Indeed it is. In our book that we just finished on the Yellow Submarine, we talked an awful lot about that kind of thing, uh, believe it or not, because of the um, the methods by which this film was created which is a very happy film. Are you familiar with that film, Yellow Submarine? Uh, I am not. I oh, actually have not okay. watched the film. Oh, well, then I better. <laughs> well, <laughs> I bet, then let's uh, drop that one. But because, um, uh, oh, that's okay. Uh, it is exciting. And my apologies to you for not being familiar with Yellow Submarine because it sounds like it is, it, it's a st- story um, that illustrates exactly what we're talking about. It's a story uh, that that's about we are one people on one planet. So what the hell are we fighting each other for? Yes. Part? Oh, is the time up? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm talking too much here. Uh, our guest, of course, is Jennifer Gale, the science of planetary signatures in medicine, restoring the cosmic foundations of healing uh, with Dr. Mark S. Mikazi. And we'll be back next hour. Our guest is Jennifer Gale. The Science of Planetary Signatures in Medicine, Restoring the Cosmic Foundations of Healing, Healing Arts Press. Now, we finally got to a question. I've been waiting to read this one. What is the connection between the human organism and planetary organisms? Well, that connection is... Kundalini energy or life force energy, it's there is an electromagnetic connection between the planets and the way and what surrounds our bodies. So I am not by any means an expert on electromagnetism, but I do know that this is the force that that is this invisible connection between the way the body works and the way the planets work. The best example 
is to think of to think of the energy of the earth um you know the earth has ley lines so they're meridians or meridians that house energy and there are different parts of the world that have more energy vortices of energy let's say and those places on the planet are very much like certain acupuncture points on the body but there is and and the meridians in the body um i'm trying to remember the name of this book but they're called axiotonal lines and axial is i think it it just you know it's referring to an axis or a line tone of course for the tone or the vibration axiotonal lines are are conducting vibrational energy. So it is truly vibration that connects everything. Now, I, like I said, I'm not an electromagnetic energy expert, but um, I do know that all energy can be changed and through sound. Like when you apply sound to Oh, you can do this at the Smithsonian. They have a steel plate with sand. And when you apply the bow across the the steel plate, it creates a pattern. It creates a tone first, and that tone creates a pattern. So this also happens with liquid or with water. And so the work of Wilson Bentley and Dr. Masaru Emoto were very important works that demonstrated how vibra- how water holds vibration. And it can be, just like plants are affected by vibration, so are all the elements. We are 70% water. And so vibration has a profound impact on our being and how we metabolize water. But all of the elements come together and create a specific effect. And these, the elements are always morphing. So, you know, one person may have too much fire, they're too angry, um, or, you know, they want to, they're constantly moving the fire element in it. It's extreme. Just think of how it operates in nature. It is going to consume what's in its path. It has many things going on at once. It has a very loud voice, but it, the good thing is it transforms what it transforms substances. So we need a certain amount of fire in order to transform the food that we take in and turn it into energy. Mm-hmm. Um, vibration is simply a means to help to ex- that accelerates and influences the morphing process so that there is not an extreme in one area, but there is more harmony and balance and symmetry. I know I got off the topic of electromagnetism because I'm not really, I'm more, I, okay. I'd rather stay on the topic of vibration, but well. it. We don't see life force energy, but we know that that is what connects all living things. The term, the phrase, all things are vibration. I was trying, did years ago, I was trying to determine who, who said it first, all things are vibration. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, um, I don't know, but I, I can tell you that Goethe is the one who said, geometry is frozen music but yes i would agree i i'm not going to be able to come up with a name because like i said um (laughs) a lot of this book i'll just be frank a lot of this book was channeled like i had an outline i knew what i wanted to talk about and i started writing and i was taken down so many rabbit holes i learned so many new things and So while I am the vehicle for the messages that this book is bringing forth, I by no means do I consider myself an expert. I hope that clarifies. I mean, I'm (laughs) I had to do a lot of research Mm -hmm. and I don't remember 
every single thing that I researched. <laughs> well, I've read your entire so book one and a half times, and I still can't remember certain things because they were so new to me, uh, in some, some of them. And, and it was a thrill to see new stuff, and, and that's the reason why I've uh, I still have been asking that question for the last 20 years to all of my friends who uh, got into what vibrations, good vibrations. You remember the old days? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, <laughs> and, um, and unfortunately, uh, uh, most people didn't think it was vibrations that they were saying, but something else, and I don't know what it was. But uh, vibrations well, I- are extremely important. Vibrations are consciousness. I mean, this is the way that I would That's address right. it. Yeah. So uh, anything that is alive has motion and anything that moves has a vibration, whether we hear it with our physical ears or not. And that's why Pythagoras in always talked about the music of the spheres. He could tune in to the music of the planets. And so I believe that, you know, there's so much we still have not consciously tapped into. So much of our ocean we don't know about. I mean, Mm -hmm. we've only observed perhaps, you know, 5% of the ocean, um, 5% of the black matter or the cosmos and and it's the same with human consciousness we only use a small percentage of it so and and i think this also goes back to another question you had um the what do what does the human organism and the planetary organisms what do they have in common and i did say kundalini energy Mm -hmm. well our DNA is, you know, talking about that we only use a fraction of what we are capable of. There's what's known as, quote unquote, junk DNA, which I believe is not junk DNA at all. It's simply, it holds information that we can tap into and awaken to these greater spiritual gifts that for me is the true and natural science. It's the organic science Mm -hmm. that we need to be developing instead of this artificial, you know, where life is defined from under a microscope. There's so much more to medicine. There's so much more to the body's capability of healing itself and becoming whole, regenerating itself than we 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 barely scratch the surface of this what i call spiritual technology so science and spirit should not be diametrically they should not be enemies but at the time of everyone knows the hippocratic oath and hippocrates is a no, is a name that i'm sure everyone can recall hearing about or at some point or other but hippocrates actually it was at that time that they took spirit and the esoteric sciences out of medicine and medicine became totally mechanistic and substantive only. Mm -hmm. So nothing that is unseen mattered anymore. But in one of the sections in my book, I actually, the, the subtitle of this section is called Empty Space Matters. And I mean that in two ways. Empty space is not empty. It is full of dense energy. And this is what the scientists talk about. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just kind of paraphrasing what science does admit, that empty space is not empty. Mm -hmm. But I also meant it in the way that empty space is, it it matters. It should matter to us in our lives. I hope that made sense. (laughs) How would you find out what's going on in empty space? Well, like I said, that's for astronomers and people who study the cosmos. But 
what we as individuals can do every day is tap into again this the inner the inner voice listen you know align with life source energy and begin the dialogue if you don't ask the answer is always no if you don't ask you're always going to see life only through the 3d physical reality but there is so much more and we can learn so much more so when we you know begin this dialogue and hold ourselves accountable for our own growth that's that's how we bring more wisdom and harmony to our planet oh we have to take another break uh darn it a uh, time out here on the playing field on 21st century radio with our guest jennifer gale and uh we'll be back in just a few minutes and we will get to what what do you mean when you say that healing is reciprocal because i think that's very a very important element that I was not aware of before. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Jason Liu, real life wizard and author of John D and the Empire of Angels. You can find out more about me and magic at jasonlouv.com. And you're listening to 21st Century Radio with Bob Hieronymus. So a lot of what I write about is based upon ancient memories that we do hold in our DNA. And as um, we all have these memories of our ancestors, it's in our blood, it's in our DNA, and we have access to this information. That song was written a long time ago. Um, I mean, (laughs) before these books, let's say, but that's what the song was about. It was a, a longing for home, basically. Oh, yes, indeed. And did you long for home? Always. And, uh, you know, now I feel as though there is a convergence, let's say, of our future self and the future Earth, the new Earth that I do feel is being birthed right now. And what has happened in the past and all these ancient traumas that the earth has had to undergo, I mean, countless wars, always war, strife, violence, um, things that are always, things that serve only to create more death, more hatred. Um, I feel that we are, in fact, I know it is, <laughs> it is a fact that we are leaving the age of Pisces and moving into the age of Aquarius. And any time there is a changing age, the old ways want to hang on and want to maintain control. But the old ways are passing away. There is no changing that. Um, we will move in. We are moving in to the age of Aquarius where we will recognize the science that I was talking about before the break. This science of spirituality is what I'm referring to, Mm -hmm. not the mechanistic, intellectual, um, you know, advancing science at the sacrifice of all things spiritual and unseen. Mm -hmm. We are moving into a new age of technology, yes, but um, there needs to be a balance. You can't have a developed intellect without developing the heart along with it. Mm -hmm. And you can't, and without developing the intuition along with it. So there needs to be a balance. And we've had a war of the sexes, a war of the genders, a war of the liberals and conservatives, a war of this, a war, war on cancer, a war on everything. And instead, we need to be seeing how all things play a necessary part all beings play a necessary role and the only way to really restore unity is by is when individuals Mm -hmm. recognize the power they have within to access infinite possibilities infinite source well from that that's the age of aquarius from that perspective what do you mean when you say that healing is reciprocal Everything we do 
has a reverberation, has, has a reverberating response. Um, an example, let's just say uh, for, for those who have been on the table and had, you know, neuro, deep neuromuscular work done or trigger therapy, uh, the therapist might be working at the head and it will <laughs> cause pain in the lower part of the body. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected. And there is a mirroring that goes on from heaven to earth and from earth to our bodies. So inner space, uh, for, an, for an example, um, one of the platonic solids that represents fire is the tetrahedron. Well, the carbon atom in the body is also in the form of a tetrahedral um, a tetrahedron pyramid. Pyramid. Mm -hmm. So, inner, uh, you know, this is cosmic light in inner and outer space. Whatever we do within our own being has an immediate effect in something that may be further away than we can even fathom. Mm -hmm. It's what. Uh, Einstein called spooky action at a distance. Oh, yes, yes. Why is knowing our true origin so important to the healing process? Well, it's something that I've been talking about really um, since we started this interview. Our origin is sacred. Our origin is that of life source energy we were created in the image of life source energy and there is nothing more powerful than a human being who is fully awake and conscious and using life source energy to bring more light into their being into their um their full being mm -hmm. body mind spirit emotions and that activates the environment and it has a reverberating effect so um you were talking about reciprocity right what Correct. was it because they're all they're all melding Reciprocal. together right now all of the questions <laughs> because they all re are reciprocal <laughs> yeah so uh also in in here we are back to the role that uh, I wanted this question before. Uh, what is the role of vibration in the healing process that we talked about a little bit last uh, hour? But do yeah. you, is there anything you want to add to that area, area? And what is the role of vibration in the healing process? What does vibration well, do? Sure. Well, vibration immediately has an immediate impact on what it touches and what especially when you use sound intentionally for, you know, for example, what you've introduced with the Astro Sound recordings. There's an intention as I am playing or recording these combinations of the planetary frequencies. Vibration immediately restores harmony and symmetry to what it touches. Now, sometimes the vibration will need to break up stagnation. So it may feel dissonant. It may feel um, agitate, you know, someone might feel a little bit of agitation, but if you're breaking up what's stagnant, that has to happen before it can be reordered into symmetry and harmony. But vibration is what brings the change and change is what brings healing. Because again, stagnation is constriction, it's death, it's rigidity. Indeed, it is. Um, next, can you talk about the doctrine of signatures and what that has to do with planetary signatures? This is some, some area that I knew absolutely nothing about. So, doctrine of signatures is... Uh, I, I think I might have mentioned this in the first segment that nature marks each growth according to its curative benefit. In other words, every plant has a signature that it, it that is derived 
from the energies of the heavens and from earth. And our bodies have the same thing. At the time that we're born, the, the snapshot of the heavens is what we're calling the natal astrological signature. That's what I am equating to the human's um, doctrine of signatures. Mm -hmm. So then you understand that this is a snapshot of many different planets which hold a vibration of consciousness. And they're in different signs that have a way of that they express themselves and then an area of life. So this entire picture or labyrinth is what I'm calling the musical composition. And as we work with these frequencies, with these vibrations of consciousness and understand what a particular transit is teaching us, what are we to learn from this? How are we to grow? Oh, we need to, to grow in this area. We need to let go of this and open to a new way of, a new perception. Um, these are the ways that we can dialogue with the planets. And we're, it's a way that we can bring to life our own doctrine of signatures, our musical composition. Mm -hmm. All right signatures could you tell us what signatures mean so the way i'm using signature is a geometry a, a geometric form oh i see for instance yes yeah, so your your astrology chart your natal chart is a snapshot of the heavens and it's all these different lines all of um, geometric relationships and those geometric relationships are also um, harmonic relationships. So vibration can introduce, it gets things moving again. It gets the dialogue going so that we can become more conscious, more aware of what that particular planet's lesson is, is telling. The signature is the entire picture. So Think of a snowflake. I love to tell this story oh, because yeah. I really. Yeah, I, yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. I really admire Wilson Bentley's work with snowflakes. So, to give an example, he discovered that no two snowflakes are alike. Each one has its unique signature, its unique formation. And that formation is defined by. <laughs> that particular snowflake's journey, as he called it, journey through cloudland. In other words, you know, what happened in the experience as that snowflake was drifting from heaven to earth? That's what created this signature. And it's, I feel like it's just such a beautiful symbology of our signatures as human beings. You know, the soul, the consciousness has had many, many experiences before incarnating in this life. And so our astrological signature is a description of all those memories, those experiences. And to be an awakened being, to move from student to master, we have to agree to be in dialogue with the signature that we took on. Think of it as curriculum or contract that we signed. We we get amnesia as soon as we're born. We forget that we've signed this contract. And some of those notes are really hard to reach and they're really challenging. But it's still worth practicing mm -hmm. <laughs> to make beautiful music and to create more harmony on this planet. Well, to, in order to maintain our harmony tonight, we need to take another break here on 21st Century Radio. It's rules and regulations that we can't do anything about. Uh, our guest is Jennifer Gale, and we're talking about the science of planetary signatures in medicine. And sometime we'll be moving towards other things. I really wish we could go back to snowflakes because there are stories on 
on how the uh, how they were photographed and and determined. Do, can we do that when we return? Sure. Okay, because I I really enjoyed that aspect of it, and we'll be back in just oh about five or six minutes. Hello, this is Tom McNear, a remote viewing student of the great psychic Ingo Swan and an original member of the Army's Stargate Psychic Program. You are listening to the amazing 21st Century Radio with Dr. Bob Hieronymus. Thank you. I am Dr. Bob Hieronymus, and this is 21st Century Radio. We've been doing this weekly interview show for over 30 years. Let's rejoin with our guest now. Well, we'll still give you credit for that now, but we're going to go back to snowflakes. I mean, I was just uh, so excited to to see the what the section dealing with the hexagon phenomenon. Uh, yes. Because, as a matter of fact, maybe we should uh, uh, talk about that as we move into the secret life of uh, snowflakes, because that that's the reason why I enjoyed it so much checking out these things what is what is the hexagon phenomenon so i called it that because in researching the geom the geometric formation of certain substances the hexagon kept coming up and the best way that i can describe it is that just like the honeycomb the hexagon is a formation that substances in the physical realm gravitate to. So a lot, many things take on the hexagon formation and you might see it when you slice open a tomato. Um, But especially in snowflakes, this became apparent and like, even though the snowflakes have different signature they tend to have six points but all of the signatures are very unique Mm -hmm. so uh, the work of Wilson Bentley who was born in February 1865 was he himself was fascinated with snow crystals and wanted to be able to find a way to photograph them. So I'm just going to read a little bit, if that's okay. Of one course of it quotes. is. Of course it is. Um, Under the microscope, I found that snowflakes were miracles of beauty, and it seemed a shame that the beauty should not be seen and appreciated by others. Every crystal was a masterpiece of design, and no one design was ever repeated. When a snowflake melted, that design was forever lost. Just that much beauty was gone without leaving any record behind. And then later, um, when he did attach the correct camera to a microscope and was able to photograph them, he there was one other thing that I wanted to say. Um, so much uh, was ever life history written in more dainty hieroglyphics. That was his comment. <laughs> so it's... It's so interesting to me because he did detailed meteorological studies on the snowflakes and why the formations were different depending on the storm, the snowstorm, and the, um, you know, I guess components or elements that made that storm unique. They also, the storm also, the uniqueness of the storm also made the formation unique. So that's the journey through cloud land that we're talking about in terms of these little hexagons that are are formed and no one ever I mean who pays attention he's the only one in our history who ever took the time well, to, to look well that's what that's why this book is so good in many ways there I mean there are there are beings out there involved in all of these different kinds of things that that weren't getting too much attention or were being uh, ignored uh, for millenniums, and that's one of the yeah. important things about your book is making sure that people realize that things really were going on. Such as, I also interested in going about, and we should be talking about the importance of water, because yes. uh, it's it's obviously it's going to be a big problem, and is a big problem now. But it's going to be much worse in in the future. Without water, we're, it's over. 
Yes. And what I would love to remind your listeners is that water, we can change the, what am I, the health or the molecular structure of water simply by intending positive, holding positive thoughts, call it prayer, call it intention. Um, But the work of Dr. Masaru Emoto is extremely important. He wrote the hidden messages in water and photographed water crystals. Um, Messages from water show how the water crystals change from perfect symmetrical forms to distorted, chaotic looking, you know, nothing, Mm -hmm. uh, just like an amoeba or something, you know, without any, any particular formation, depending on what music he played, whether it was classical, you know, could have been Mozart, Beethoven, but also just word formations, putting a positive word on the water that he was photographing and then doing the same experiment with words of a low vibration, like hatred, um, uh, you know, like I hate you, you're stupid or something like that. So the water crystals of course took on a different, a different form. And the reason this is so very important is that our earth is 70% covered with water. Our bodies also are 70% water. So the language that we say to ourselves and how we, you know, whether we hold earth as a sacred, in sacred light and as a sacred living consciousness, um, these this is so important. It, this is what connects planetary science and signatures with our lives and with our signature. Understanding how everything is connected and especially with water. Water represents emotion. And so allowing ourselves to feel what we need to feel, but not getting stuck in feelings like hatred, not getting stuck in feelings of anger or you're wrong or you're stupid because you don't see things the way I see things or you don't express yourself the way that I express myself. These are the things that we've just got to stop doing. We need to grow up as as a planet, as a human species. It's time to grow up. Indeed. Even if we had, you know, parents who did not love us the way that we deserved or wanted, we've got to hold ourselves accountable. It's time now to reparent ourselves. And, you know, you can go to a psychotherapist, you can go to a healer, but I believe that we're moving into a time when it's important for every individual to do the inner work necessary. And it, and now as earth moves into these higher galactic forces and energies that are enveloping the earth and that started, you know, it's been going on for a while, but especially since earth's alignment with a galactic center in 2012, it's like earth is in the birth canal. The crown is aligned. We are getting ready to give birth to a new earth and human beings can get with a galactic program and go along for the ride and enter these higher frequencies and help the earth make this transition in a way that will also help them heal because healing I feel will be accelerated the whole process we don't have to go through years of taking pharmaceutical drugs and we can heal faster if we tap into this spiritual technology it's happening the opportunity is there right now and and that's what I would encourage people to do oh yes uh, the Oh gosh, Rudy, there it is. I'm, I'm just, I can't help but keeping. I've read. If I showed you your book, if I, I'll hold it up to the microphone here, and you can see, <laughs> you can see there is not a page that's not written on. There was so much information that I just always wanted to know, but, but fortunately, you wrote about. 
uh, especially in regarding to entering the I Ching. My gosh, Rudy, I mean, there, there's so much to this book. And, 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 of course, talking about the flower of life and that's in, that importance of that. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people using it, but they're not, they're not talking about its importance and what it means, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Would you want to comment on that a little bit on the flower of life? Well, the flower of life is a repeating pattern. We see it in nature um, and it's, I I think because of the time, I don't know that I can go into great detail, but it's a tetrahedral pattern that continues to grow and expand. So we can meditate upon it and it serves to expand our awareness. But the main thing, the main point is that there are many repeating patterns found in nature. You mentioned DNA and the I Ching. There are corresponding patterns between human DNA and the I Ching. So, yeah, this book is all about connecting the dots of these repeating patterns simply to demonstrate if we're going to put, you know, come back to putting it simply as above, so below, as within, so without. And um, I wonder if it would be okay, Dr. Bob, to end with the little poem that I had in the afterword that kind of sums up what certainly, I would love for listeners certainly to certainly do with. that. As a matter of fact, if you've got two of them, that's two poems fine Uh, let her go (laughs) attune with the moon and follow the sun let trust be your guide when each day is done the chaos unfolding finds order in time for time follows cycles of heaven's design push not the river seek not to divide for all things are one in one all abide wonderful that's good How about another? All right. Well, this is from T.S. Eliot, Little Gidding. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Hmm. (laughs) You know, if we did have time, the question would be, we all recognize the name Hippocrates and his contribution to medicine. Yeah, can you explain to our listeners a little bit about how medicine was before Hippocrates? And we're not going to have enough time to do that. But I wanted to tell you that was really impressive, that the material mm-hmm. uh, especially. Because I had no idea. And, and that I'm sure, if I didn't have any idea about this, that most of our listeners out there are the same. Well, before Hippocrates, medicine, uh, there were, it was more of an esoteric practice. They understood that we couldn't separate spirit from mm-hmm. matter. After Hippocrates, or beginning with Hippocrates, um, medicine became completely divorced of all things spiritual. And this book is about reminding us that we cannot continue doing that. That pendulum has run its course it swung to the extreme and now it's time to bring spirit back into medicine right on as we used to say back there and <laughs> when i was a kid um all oh, knew we have to go i'm i'm sorry i'm afraid we are out of time and it's my fault and i feel terrible about that jennifer because we have to have you on another time to talk about some of these other things our guest has been Jennifer Gale, The Science of Planetary Signatures in Medicine, Restoring the Cosmic Foundations of Healing. And if you think you know a lot about healing or understand where it's going, you should read at least this book. And here we are at the close of the hour, and we invite you again to follow 21st Century Radio on Facebook and continue the discussion.